So what we did now, we looked at one uh, YT. So what if we could have a representation that is similar to the var where we have more than one uh, variable? So we have different equation and each one of these indigenous variables will come once on the, um, on the left hand side. And this is what we call the vector error correction uh, model. And this is developed by Johansson 1988. And he didn't say that integration can also be modeled within a modified VAR framework. And this is by construction, this is the um, a bivariate VAR1 model. So it's just to simplify things, we have two variables on the left hand side. Um, so that means we've got two equations and it's VAR1 meaning that we have only one, uh, one lag. So the idea here is the same. So if the combination of these two, so we assume that these two are y1 and y2 are i1, so they are non-stationary. So a combination of these two, a linear combination of y1 and y2 would produce, if we have such combination that would produce a stationary uh, uh, error term uh, or i0, that means y1 and y2 are co-integrated. So it's, it's just in the same, uh, in the same uh, sense. Of course, you could have more than two variables, uh, but again, the idea is how we how we gonna present uh, this in the uh, in error correction form. So this is how we can do it in error correction form. So we do the same thing. So it follows that you see y one t minus y one t minus one. So this is the change in y t. So exactly everything we did there. So just but here we have two equations. Okay. So y t y two t minus y two t minus one again. So we could represent this as uh, uh, in, in, in error correction form, the same way we did in the uh, 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 previous examples, but now we have more than, one, more than one equation. We have a VAR setup, so we have more than one equation. And this is the general form where we have the delta yt. So yt here is just a, what is yt? This is a vector of endogenous variables, yeah? So you have got these on the left-hand side. So, and then these are the yt minus one, and again, the pi here, or the this this sign here, this is very uh, important to when we come to the test of uh, contiguration. So Johansson just, what we did here, so it just show, show us that we can do the same in a VAR framework. So we can do the same, the same analysis exactly for integration in a VAR uh, uh, framework. So how, how can we know then? So this is the setup of the model, okay? So remember these variables, y1 and y2, okay? Doesn't matter how many variables but, uh, we have, but this is in this example, we assume that we have only two variables, y1 and y2. So we assume that these two variables are uh, are non-stationary, are I1. So what what remains is what we what we are interested in is to test whether there's integration or not between these two variables. So what Johansson suggested is the to look at the rank of this matrix, uh, this pi. So this is the matrix here. Look. So and and the rank of this will 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 tell us. We can use this to uh, test for this to know whether there is integration or not. But first, let's just quickly explain what what that means. The rank of any matrix is the number of linearly independent rows or columns. So if I look at these three matrix matrices, so matrix A, so has rank of two because uh, row two, for example, cannot be expressed as a multiple of row one or vice versa. But if you look at the, so that means we've got two independent, linearly independent rows here. So to understand this, look at matrix uh, B. So matrix B is uh, of rank one. Why? Because if you look at uh, row one is 1.5 times row two. Okay, so if you multiply this by 1.5, we get this one. 1.5 will give this one. So that means uh, this matrix is of rank one. Okay, this matrix of rank zero. So that's what I mean. So what we are interested in here with Johansson, to do the Johansson test for integration, to know whether we have integration or not, we need to test the, for this, the, the rank of this pi, of this matrix. 
okay and that's why it is important just to understand why we mean by the rank of this of this metric so the, this was just a very like simple example to show you what what it means uh which remind you what what we mean by the rank of of this matrix so the idea here is that now the condition that Johansson showed us that a stationary or I0 linear combination of Y1 and Y2 to exist, we need the to, to check the rank of this uh, pi matrix. I'll finish quickly with this one. So in our example, we had bivariate model. Okay, so a model with two variables. So the uh, maximum rank we could have, the full rank, the matrix we have is two. So can't have more than two, okay? So if when we test this, if we if the rank of this pi is two, that means both variables are stationary. Remember? So if we think of integration, both variables need to be non-stationary. So these two variables are stationary. Then we can't say they are integrated. If the rank of this mat matrix was two. So that means there is no they are not integrated. You can't say they are integrated. You've got actually two variables that are I, I zero. So they are stationary variables. Okay. So um, if the this matrix uh, was of rank one, that means the both variables are non-stationary. Okay, but we but they are integrated as well. So integration would exist if the rank of this matrix was one. Again, I'm just following the example. We have two variables. So the full rank, meaning these are two stationary variables, then there's no way to, there's no reason to talk about integration because we've got I zero, sorry, two variables I zero, and there's no room for uh, uh, talking about integration because they actually they are I zero. So we would we'll talk about integration. We have I one variables or I2 variables, but in, in most cases we'll talk about I1 variables, and then um, and, and that, that happens if the matrix, of the rank of this matrix pi is, is 1. But if the, the rank of this matrix is 0, that means both variables are I1, they are not stationary, and also they are not integrated. Okay, so if that's the case, that means most likely you will have like kind of spurious regression thing. So you know, so there's no integration. Although you have I1 uh, uh, variables, but we don't have integration between y y1 and y y2. Okay, so Johansson developed two test statistics that can be used to decide on the rank of this matrix, and these are the trace statistic and the maximal Egan uh, value statistic. And these are called lambda, uh, um, lambda uh, trace, lambda maximum is just the trace statistic and the maximal Egan value statistic. So it's very, very straightforward. So what we have here, so this is the lambda, lambda, uh, lambda uh, trace, lambda maximum. So first of all, you look at the, this R is the rank. So you test whether the rank of this matrix which is pi is zero or not so if you accept this then the series are i1 and they are not integrated so there's no integration this is a kind of superior regression so stop here okay but if you reject this here that means you proceed to again to see whether it is rank one or two uh, rank one or not sorry first so if it is rank one if you accept this that means they are i1 and integrated if you reject that means they are i0 because if you reject means that the rank of by this uh, of this matrix is 2 it's full rank so when we say when we said when it is full rank we we have i0 variables already so y1 and y2 are stationary and they, there's no like i mean there's no point talk about integration they are stationary and you could just actually run the uh, the regression using all this so the idea here is that again it just to we're trying to test whether we have integration or not using Johansson test so uh, these both uh, most cases they should give you the same results so again so it just the difference here is the null uh, the oh sorry the alternative uh, 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 hypothesis um, so in the first one if you reject if you sorry, if you accept, then you stop because you've got I1 uh, uh, series and there's no integration. So that's like an 
uh, this evidence of no contiguation. But if you reject this one, then you go to this one and check whether you accept or not. So if you can't reject this one or if you accept this one, then the this is evidence of having I1 variables and contiguated series as well. But if you reject, that means these series are I0. Okay? So basically, so what we did here is just another way to test for contiguation. Okay? This is Johansson test for contiguation. So again, we're just building on what we learned about the error correction model. And we move to the VEC model, vector error correction model. We could, we could have any number of uh, variables. Uh, the difference between the, uh, the first one and this one, the first one is just residual based. So you need to do the estimation, get the residual, and then test the residual. With this one, you just need to um, apply this Johansson test to, the, um, to test for the rank of this of this um, coefficient of this matrix here pi okay and and that's it so if we have uh, two variables that means the full rank is two so if you get two that means they are stationary if the rank was one that means they are not stationary but we have contiguation if you get zero so that means they are not stationary and we don't have contiguation Okay, so it's just another way to test another method, another test to test for um, co-integration. Okay, so that's that's all what I wanted to cover uh, today. I hope you'll find it useful. It's very important to think of or to understand the idea of um, uh, VAR models and the uh, VEC models or the, the idea of co-integration. Uh, first VAR, we with the VAR, we, we, we assume that we have I0. So there's no, we don't talk about contiguation with var because we've got i zero variables, so we don't have uh, the so, so we test for uh, the integration uh, properties of the variables. If they are i zero, then you go ahead with var, and there's no problem. But again, if they are i one, then you can't do var model. So you have uh, one thing to do. You could um, you could difference the variable, just transform the variable, make convert them to make them i zero, and then you carry on with uh, a, var a var model, but actually you're losing so much by doing that because with the VEC model, you could have information about the short run dynamics of the model and the long run dynamics of, of the model. So uh, probably in this case, you should do, you should test for contiguation and you should do uh, error correction uh, model.